Hey, hey, what is up, spiritual hooligan? What would you do if you were fearless? I mean, what would you cancel or stop doing out of guilt and obligation? Would you call that person that you've been afraid to call? Would you start that project that you've been putting off? Would you quit that job that is degrading you? I've got eight keys to fearless living. And today I want to start with our first key. And this is going to be the first of eight daily enlightenments where we discuss this. And I want to help you to connect with enlightened perspectives because when you do that, it's so easy for you to go into a fearless living state. Remember, my entire philosophy is about enlightened prosperity. And enlightenment means that you know that all is well. Prosperity means that you're doing well. And that's not about money. That's just about doing well in your life. My name is Matthew Ferry, and I'm bringing you your daily enlightenment. It's your moment to pause, to slow down, to get connected to enlightened perspectives. I want to help you to quiet your mind and restore your peace. Now, fearless living. It's an expression of enlightenment. And when you see that the source of life for you is the source of life for everyone and everything, your mind goes quiet. And when that happens, your fear disappears. And that's a very pragmatic and practical thing to have happen because when your fear disappears, stress and overwhelm and sadness and fear of failure, they all fade to the background. And that's really, really practical. So today I start a series of eight keys to fearless living. And those keys are one, developing your knowing. Two, being committed versus attached. Three, creating alignment. Four, shifting your being. Five, fearless speaking. Six, creating structure. Seven, restoring integrity. And eight, fearless action. So eight keys to fearless living. Let's start with number one, developing your knowing. Now, knowing is the practice of being deliberate about what you're looking for. Knowing, like you're in this knowing state. Are you in a creative mode or are you in a destructive mode? Because it really is your choice if you're in a state of awareness. Now, the dictionary defines knowing as showing or suggesting that one has knowledge or awareness of a secret or known to only a few people. Hmm, that's interesting, right? So I want you to just put a little smile on your face right now. Shake your head with me. What is that secret? Well, one thing is, is if you've read my book, Quiet Mind, Epic Life, then you know that there are some pretty powerful, enlightened perspectives that supersede the feared state or the fearful state of survival consciousness. For example, You've been alive over and over and over and over as a human being thousands of times. Life is a vacation for the soul and there's nothing that needs to be done. That's an enlightened perspective that when you know that, your fear starts to disappear. You're creative, you're curious, you're interested in life. When you take on that perspective, it reduces your fear. The idea that you are the creator of your experience and not the creator of life. Really powerful to know that, being the creator of your experience and not the creator of life. So knowing is also defined in the dictionary as done in full awareness or consciousness. So this is really connected to the definition of enlightened. Enlightened is having or showing a rational, modern, and well-informed outlook, spiritually aware. Hello, that's you. So when you begin to implement the rapid enlightenment process into your life, well, you naturally become more deliberate, intentional, conscious. You begin to do things on purpose rather than through default programmatic autopilot. You have peace of mind because you're operating in a framework that's effective. Now, when you connect with enlightened perspectives, specifically the ones I talk about in chapter nine of my book, you begin to experience a profound feeling of trust. Trust is part of knowing. And that's really the basis of fearless living. So the dictionary defines trust as a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. So knowing is really an aspect of being 
reliable, right? It's relying on, counting on, depending on. And, and there's yourself, there's others, there's the world. My objective here in teaching you the rapid enlightenment process is to help you to get to a place where you're trusting, you're developing that trust in yourself, in other people, in the universe, knowing that all is well. So to develop your knowing, you personally need to be working on your own reliability and your acknowledgement of the reliability of the universe. And reliability, my friend, is an aspect of integrity. We're going to talk about that in the seventh uh, key here of fearless living. But reliability really is working from an empowering context and, and doing it as it's meant to be done without cutting corners. This is very, very powerful. When you go into this place where you are doing things as they are meant to be done without cutting corners, where you are working from an empowering context, when you're trusting that all is well, knowing that all is well, everything just starts to work in your favor. It's not everything starts to work in your favor magically. It's not magic. It's just everything starts to work in your favor because you're operating in an effective framework doing what you know to do, doing what you said you would do, doing things on time. This creates an inner state of knowing for you. Most people operate in spiritual frameworks in what I call the spiritual derelict framework. And the spiritual derelict is someone who is incredibly spiritual, but not really practical incredibly focused on their inner state, but because they don't take care of the outer state, the outer state, their world is constantly disrupting them and it robs you of your peace. So reliability is really, really, really important when it comes to your, your knowing and your trust, because when you work on your own personal reliability, all of a sudden, you're able to take responsibility for your experience. When you're reliable and you know that you're reliable, fearless living begins to be your daily experience. So it's kind of like this. The best practice to increase your knowing is to intentionally make peace with things like the worst case scenario. This will increase your knowing and your trust and your faith because the worst case scenario, right? The drunk monkey in your head, when it starts flashing all of these fearful messages in your mind, you, you have to practice, you have to become skilled at challenging the drunk monkey by facing the worst case scenario and making peace with it happening, knowing that if the worst thing happens, that you'll actually be okay. That puts you in a more trusting and peaceful place. I'll put the link for my process on, on um, doing the worst case scenario exercise in the notes below, okay? Another thing is to release the need to achieve, to accomplish, to have, to be something. This will massively increase your knowing and fearlessness. Begin to adopt these enlightened perspectives. And I talk about them uh, in, in chapter nine of my book. I am a soul on vacation in a body. What happens? So first of all, you don't know if that's true or not. Neither do I. But, but it muscle tests strong, which is an interesting data point. And what happens when you begin to take that on? How does that shift you're thinking, I'm a soul on vacation in a body. On vacation, I am infinite. The purpose of life is to experience things. I'm a soul, and as a soul, I'm infinite. Positive and negative experiences are just at value. Just at value. I'm infinite. I'm I'm everything. I'm I'm the same thing that everything is. Therefore, positive and negative is really just a point of view from this particular perspective that's happening in this body. There's no need to resist any of it. Achieving the objective, my friend, living the life that you want to live is actually not the prize. The, the prize is the experience that you're having. Knowing is one of the keys one of the keys going into a knowing state, which is trusting, 
It's being able to rely on yourself, being able to rely on the universe, knowing that everything's going to be okay, knowing that all is well, knowing you can deal with whatever's coming your way. That knowing state, it has a confidence to it. And that will help you operate in your enlightened framework so much more easily than if you allow yourself to, to go into these insecure states because you're not really taking on yourself. So my question for you today is, what stuck out in the things that I talked about? So what are you going to work on to develop your own knowing so that you can activate your fearless living? Will you leave me a comment below? I really want to know. My name is Matthew Ferry, author of Quiet Mind, Epic Life. In fact, here it is right here. Dun, 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 Quiet Mind, Epic Life. Will you do me a favor? Will you like this video if it turned out or this audio, if, however you're consuming this? Like it, please. Share this with your other fellow spiritual hooligans and leave me a comment. Those three things tell these big platforms, this is stuff worth sharing that they should then send out to other people. Subscribe to my channel. I put out a new daily enlightenment every single day. In fact, what you're going to find is I'm about to put down eight in a row, all on the keys to living a fearless life or fearless living. So do me a favor, go over to Facebook as well. We've got a bolstering great group over there called Spiritual Hooligans. I'll put the link for that down below as well. Thanks again for tuning in to this Daily Enlightenment.